White Flower Day was first celebrated in Sweden, in 1908. As a sign of solidarity with all patients with tuberculosis, people wore a celluloid flower of white chamomile, a symbol of natural antibiotic, which was part of the traditional medicine used to treat tuberculosis, and at the same time symbolizing love and vulnerability. Men had the flowers in their buttonholes or pinned to their hats, and ladies had them pinned to hats or to dresses. In Russia, this holiday was held by the All-Russian League for Combating Consumption, which was created by decree of Tsar Nicholas II. In the first year, 1911, the collection of funds for hospitals and shelters for patients with consumption gave about 500,000 rubles. The collectors, equipped with a name card and a special token, accepted donations in exchange for specially made flowers, white daisies. The gathering took place on the streets, in state and private institutions, factories, educational institutions, and theatres. The movement of the white flower, covered a huge territory of the country. Other cities of the Russian Empire followed the capital. 104 cities participated. Thousands of volunteer pickers took to the streets of those cities, including Moscow, Minsk, Yekaterinburg, Kazan, and Yalta. The imperial family also took part in the celebration of this day and fundraising. Every time the emperor's family came to Levadia, large charity bazaars were held in Yalta, under the august patronage of Empress Alexandra, and with her personal participation. Spring charity bazaars were called White Flower Day. They have been held on the Yalta Pier since 1911. There were pavilions set up, one of which was decorated with purple cloth, as the empress loved purple, and wisteria. Empress Alexandra sold it herself. For the charity bazaar, Empress Alexandra and her daughters, in addition to flowers, prepared with their own hands various crafts, miniatures, embroidery, and photographs of the royal family. Anna Virabova, the best friend of Empress Alexandra, wrote the following in her memoirs. In connection with the Empress's care for the tuberculosis patients in the Crimea, there was one day every summer, known as White Flower Day, and on that day every member of society, unless they had a very good excuse, went out into the towns and sold white flowers, for the benefit of the hospitals. It was a day especially delightful to the Empress, and as they grew old enough to participate in such duties, to all the young Grand Duchesses. The Empress and her daughters, worked very hard on White Flower Day, spending practically the whole day driving and walking, mingling with the crowd, and vending their flowers as enthusiastically as though their fortunes depended on selling them all. Of course they always did sell them all. The crowd surged around them, eager and proud to buy a flower from their full baskets. But the buyers were no whit happier than the sellers. I can say that with assurance. General Alexander Spiridovich, was the chief of the secret personal police, in charge of protecting Nicholas II and his family at all times, outside of the imperial palaces. He served from 1905 until the outbreak of the First World War, in late 1914. His two-volume work, Last Years of the Court at Zarsko Selo, is an invaluable day-to-day -day account of the imperial family, and important events around them during those years. He wrote the following about the White Flower Day. During the first weeks following their arrival and move into Lavodia, the imperial family was absorbed by the preparations for a charity bazaar, to benefit the poor of the city of Yalta, and its suburbs. The empress often went to the aid of the poor and the sick, but she never had in her entourage a woman capable of helping her realize all of her grand projects, much less a woman of general usefulness to her. The Grand Duchesses and the Maidens of Honor, helped the Empress with her preparations for the bazaar, and they often called on the cooperation of the officers of the Standard. They made packets, they glued, nailed, and arranged the many various objects which were going to be sold, under the eye of the Empress. The bazaar opened on September 25, 1911, in the New Boys Gymnasium building. In the large hall, there was an immense semicircular table. This was Her Majesty's counter. 
Behind the table was the Empress, all the Grand Duchesses, and the daughter of Grand Duke George Mikhailovich. They were assisted by the Maidens of Honor, the Suite, and the Officers. A myriad of magnificent objects had been put out. Many of the things, had been created by the Empress herself, such as cushions, sachets, lampshades, boxes, and frames. On many of them were the portraits of members of the Imperial family, and above all, that of the heir Alexei, who also made his appearance from time to time behind the table. They had also prepared a great lottery. Princess Trubetskaya, the wife of the Commandant of the Imperial Escort, friendly and pretty, offered tickets. Display tables bent under the weight of the lots. The walls were covered with rugs and paintings by masters. Many objects had been brought by Grand Duke Nicholas Mikhailovich, with others having been offered by the merchants of Yalta. Beautiful art vases from the Imperial Porcelain Manufacture, formed the principal lot, and were the main attraction of the lottery. The Grand Duchesses never stopped going to the lottery, curious to know who were the winners of which lot. Here the ambience was very simple, very happy, dominated by a sort of chance. Having bought four tickets for a ruble, I won a magnificent rug. Princess Trubetskaya asked my permission to hold on to it until the end of the bazaar. It made for a beautiful advertisement. The order was given to admit everyone to the bazaar. Waves of people from all stations did not cease to flow in, from the elegant world, dressed in the latest fashions, to the simple women poorly dressed. Each and everyone wanted to see the emperor, the empress, and their children, to stay for a few moments near them, and to receive some trinket from their hand, to buy an object made by them. Although the empress was ill, she made efforts to overcome her illness and to be friendly, even charming. The grand duchesses tended to the objects happily. They signed their names to postcards, which was quite a success. The public was rapt. Many peasants could not hold back their tears. The emperor watched the passers-by, saluted, and wore a friendly and enthusiastic smile. The amounts of proceeds from the bazaar were quite impressive, and the empress personally participated in their distribution to various charitable institutions. For example, in 1911 and 1913, the family of the emperor collected more than 40,000 rubles in Yalta. In 1911, throughout the Russian Empire, half a million rubles were collected, and in 1912, one million rubles. Most of the money was donated by the imperial family. White Flower Day has not been celebrated since 1917. It began to be celebrated again in Russia, only in the 1990s. Based strictly on primary sources, the book The Romanov Royal Martyrs offers previously unpublished texts in English from various archival sources. An impressive 512-page book featuring more than 200 black and white photographs and a 56-page full-color photo insert.